yeah, I that's I'm calling in from my phone, but the video isn't working, and I don't know why. Um, okay, I just asked you to start your video, see what it says. Okay, it says start my video. Yeah, it's still showing cannot start video, failed to start. Ugh. Okay. Very different. Are you able to share your screen? Uh, like if you were going to talk about something? Let me see. And it's just showing gray. It's just gray right now. Um, Let me try to, I'm going to, let me log out and log back in. I'm going to stay on the phone, but let me try to reboot this and see if that works. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And then you let me know if you have any trouble, okay? Okay. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our weekly webinar. Uh, my name is Denise. I'm the uh, membership service director for the Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce. Um, and today um, we have uh, great information for you. So thank you for tuning in. So uh, a little bit uh, more about our, us and what we've been doing with the Black Chamber. Um, Straight off the bat, we've been, um, I mentioned it last week on our webinar, but we have been collaborating with um, different entities in the, in the community. So it's us, the Fort Worth Chamber, Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber, um, the city of Fort Worth and Visit Fort Worth. Uh, now we are also um, in partnership with Hillwood um, with um, an initiative that we're doing for small businesses. So one portion of it is to distribute PPE um, or protective, um, personal protective equipment for small businesses. So um, the um, businesses that qualify are uh, small businesses with 25 um, employees or less. So you're able to, you, are able, you were able to sign up and um, get on the waiting list, but our waiting list uh, was so overwhelming that we had um, done it for three different um, times. So um, our last one will be this week. So if you have already signed up, um, look out for that email from the Fort Worth Chamber. They're the ones doing the um, the confirmation emails. So uh, make sure that you check your emails, check your spam, make sure that it didn't go to the spam um, to see if you uh, were were one of the random chosen for these PPE kits. Um, and then they'll let you know the time and location for this week. So we have been um, doing that last week. We distributed um, 400 PPE kits uh, in total. And then this week we'll do the rest that we're able to do with the supplies that we have. Um, so that's one portion. So the, uh, the other portion is the grant portion. So Facebook was actually the one that, that was um, uh, able, was not, sorry, was the one that started, what well, not started, but like, um, we were able to do this because of them. They're the one that gave us money to begin with um, for the PPE kits and then also the grant portion. So we're doing a grant um, for small businesses. Again, have to, you have to have 25 employees or less to be able to qualify for this grant. This is money that you do not have to pay back. This is um, money for uh, your business to help you during this time. Uh, a lot of small businesses have been affected by uh, COVID-19. So we're trying to be there for our community and try to give back. Uh, the grant is um, preferred for chamber members and or minority business owners, but you don't have to be. Um, that's just who we're targeting at the moment. Um, so 
it's actually the grant um, is going to be live by tomorrow. So if you are you if you are a small business or if you know of a small business, make sure to have all of your items ready. So your business information, like your um, I, I, uh, EIN numbers of uh, your W-9s um, so that you're able to um, fill out the grant application and be able to submit it as fast as possible. Because um, as most of y'all know, once we have like somebody has money to give out for grants, those go ridiculously fast. Um, most of the times people can't even get on the websites because they're so overloaded with people trying to get on these applications. So make sure to be, um, to have all your information and um, ready to uh, fill out this grant. Um, it's actually going to go live tonight. So it's gonna be midnight for the 13th. Um, and I, all I say is don't wait until tomorrow, like evening, because we'll probably run out of money by then. So. Um, just make sure to um, check out our Facebook. I also sent it out on um, email. So if you're not um, currently subscribed to our mailing list, make sure to subscribe to our mailing list so that you can get our newsletters, any updates that we're doing, um, any events that we're doing, I mean, and any updates that we have. And, um, but yeah, so if you didn't get an email, check our Facebook. The link is on there for the site. The website is called protectthefort.com. Um, so check it out and uh, good luck to all of you. Uh, so um, as we've started doing these webinars, we're actually um, having our members or uh, members or um, businesses in the community have the opportunity to feature their business um, at the beginning portion of our webinars. So today we have Johnny Anderson um, and let me put him on so he can tell you a little bit more about his business. Um, so you go ahead, Johnny, let us know about, uh, Johnny's, uh, spot. Hello, everybody. First of all, I'd like to thank Denise and the Fort Worth Metropolitan, Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity to highlight my company. My company, Johnny's on the Spot LLC, is a minority and Air Force veteran owned after hours commercial cleaning company serving the Fort Worth area. We specialize in cleaning small and medium scale auto dealerships, office buildings, financial institutions, hospitality buildings, places of worship, event venues, educational facilities, and more. We've been in business now for two years and a member of the chamber for one year. Our motto at Johnny's on the Spot is we clean up so you don't have to. For more information, reach out to us at 682-549-9333. And be sure to like and follow us on Facebook at Johnny's on the Spot, LLC. Thank you. All right, Johnny, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you being here with us today and taking the time to um, tell us a little bit more about your business. Um, do we have any questions for Johnny at the moment? All right, do you have any questions for us, Johnny? Uh, no, just uh, again, thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you so much. That was, oh, um, we have one question. Yes, sir. We can't hear you, Daryl. Still can't hear you. I'm sorry. Hmm. Just give us one moment having a technical difficulty. Hey, Daryl, why don't you uh, type in your question in the chat and I can ask it for you. 
But I loved your presentation, Johnny. It was very uh, to the point and concise. We really appreciate that, especially since we're always um, tight on time. Right. Well, we <laughs> three to five minutes. So I didn't want to take all the time. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Give us one minute, I'm so sorry. Um, we'll get this settled. So um, thank you so much for having, uh, for being here today, Johnny, and we're gonna continue with our, um, with our webinar. So you're more than welcome to stay on and listen to the rest of the webinar uh, while we um, continue, okay? Okay, I may have to leave and go to work here pretty soon. Oh, that's okay. That's definitely okay. All right. Um, all right, so um, if you are interested in um, participating in our weekly webinars and um, wanting to be featured, there is a form that you're able to um, fill out and um, I will get your information, get with you before the webinar and so that you are able to have an opportunity to be able to um, um, just talk about your business, your services, where to lo where you're located, um, your social media, things like that. Um, so if you give us one moment, I'm sorry, we're having technical difficulties today. All right, Christina, are you with us? Christina? Can you hear me, Denise? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Oh, I just want to check that. Um, um, all right, Christina. So we're going to hand it over to you. Uh, my coworker is on Daryl Brewer. He's the economic development manager for the Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce. His audio is actually not working at the moment, so um, we're working on that to try to get him logged on. But I don't want to um, keep you all waiting. We're just going to go ahead and continue with our programming, which is Miss um, Christina Brooks. She was on last week, um, but uh, our, with um, all the great information that she has, uh, our timing was cut short. So um, we're going to. Um, Okay, uh, that we're going to continue with the conversation we were having last week. Now it's going to be more towards funding. Um, so Christina, if you want to, are you there? Sure. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. There's an echo. I'm not sure where it's coming from. But um, Okay. Yeah, there's just not going to be a video for Christina, uh, but if you are logged in with your computer, then um, then we'll be able to uh, share your screen if you have any information, or if you want me to go to a website talking, uh, showing what you're talking about, then I can do that. Hey, Daryl, can we hear you? Yes, I, I can hear you, but there's a terrible feedback. Um, so I'll, I'll just uh, get started in the interest of time. Thank you so much for having me back. Um, there's so many um, moving pieces right now. I'm glad that you talked about the, um, the partnership between the Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber and uh, the uh, city of Fort Worth and the small business grant that is um, going to be available tomorrow. So that's that's one of the that's one of the um, oh gosh can you can you guys hear me? I'm having a terrible time. We can hear you, but you're <laughs> echoing. Can you hear me, Denise? Yeah. 
So um, that means somebody has their volume up other than her. You, everybody, except her. Are you also okay. logged in somewhere else? Somewhere else? <laughs> okay, I see you right there. One second. Oh. Okay. okay, now there's a... There you go. There we go. I think... Hold on a second. I think that's... Uh... There we go. Can you see me now? Okay. We can see All you. All right. Yes. So, Christina, I'm here too. My husband was helping me. <laughs> Welcome, Christina. Okay. And Carol. <laughs> okay. Now you can see me. Okay, great. Christina, do you have your volume up on, on something? You have the computer volume and the phone volume. Turn it down. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Hold on a second. I'm going to hang up um, the phone and see if the... Well, first see if you unmute yourself and hear it from the computer. Hello? Can you talk? Can you hear me? Yes. Nope. We lost you. <laughs> okay. Call us back. Yeah, just call and us back. It's okay. And in the meantime, what we're going to talk about, I'm sorry for technical difficulties, I think it's the weather out there going on. So um, what we're going to talk about is economic development. We're going to talk about funding businesses. And so uh, Christina, of course, is the uh, Director of Diversity and Inclusion at the City of Fort Worth. And so she's going to talk to us about it from her perspective. We got into this just a bit last week, and it, she had to go. We kind of ran out of time. So she was just saying that uh, after the Civil War, that that was one of the uh, pushes is to talk about funding uh, African-American businesses. So hopefully today we can go into that as well and get into a little more detail from uh, her office out of diversity and inclusion. For those of you who have not applied for PPP, there's still like $100 million out there. So please do so. Even if you are a sole proprietor, you can still get PPP. You can get the emergency, EIO, emergency injury uh, disaster. You can get um, unemployment benefits, the pandemic unemployment. So there is money out there for you. And uh, we just want you to take, take advantage of it. On tonight at... Um, New, at midnight, the website will open up, and this is for businesses who have 25 employees or less, and that maybe has fallen through the cracks, that couldn't get PPP or other money from SBA. So we have uh, the grants will be from $1,000 up to $5,000. So go ahead and apply as soon as possible after midnight. Go ahead and apply. This. These things usually run out really fast. So when you talk about $250,000, we're not talking about that much and $5,000 per, that's not that many uh, businesses that we will be able to help. So that's why you wanna get your application in very fast, as soon as possible. So do we have Christina yet? Christina, are you the Galaxy Note? Says connecting audio okay. down there. So I think the weather has us a little uh, under the weather <laughs> on our technology. Yeah. That's one of the things that can happen sometimes when you have uh, bad weather. It seems to sometimes mess up your electronics. So I also know since um, we're, we have a little time here on the 20. The 20th of um, May, we will have the Minority Leaders Luncheon. That'll be from noon to one. It's going to be a Zoom meeting as well. There we will talk about revitalizing Stop 6. And Stop 6 has received $35 million 
uh, from HUD in order to kickstart the revitalization of Stop 6. And that's going to be some $278 million over six or seven years. That's what's planned. So we want you to be part of that and get as much of that as you can. So we ask that you that tune in. You can tune in right here on Facebook, Facebook Live. We'll be a Zoom and we will have the Fourth Housing, uh, Fourth Housing Solutions and probably their um, master developer. So we look forward to that's going to be noon to one uh, no, uh, on May the 20th, Wednesday, May 20th. Christina, do we have you? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Yay! Yay. <laughs> hey. And guess what? Right. E e even with all of that, we got more time today than we had last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, <laughs> Well, so thank you again. Uh, thank you again, Daryl, for um, having me back uh, to kind of finish the discussion that we started last week about uh, minority businesses. And um, you had mentioned that um, the the statement that I made about the same issues being um, at work today as uh, were in place. Um, during Reconstruction in the in the late 1800s, um, I, I you you wanted me to speak this afternoon about some of the um, new programs and ideas that we had to address uh, those issues. So you had sent me a, a couple of questions that you wanted me to. Um, go over in the time that we have allotted this afternoon. So I wanna go through those. And I think the first question that you um, had asked was about uh, capitalization and how can small businesses really um, uh, capitalize uh, their business. And um, I, I'm sure that some of the work that your um, that Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber does is really try to educate small business owners or even those um, aspiring business owners um, of the importance of uh, making sure that your personal credit is um, is where it needs to be in order to have access to traditional um, lines of credit and even non-traditional lines of credit. So the best advice that I have ever, um, practical advice anyway, that I've come across in helping small businesses understand how to gain access to capital, is really um, tying the fact that your personal credit history um, plays a major part in whether or not you have access to um, traditional uh, financial institution and funding sources. Uh, and that's not, um, typically that's not something that uh, business owners uh, or people aspiring to own businesses uh, kind of understand. They, they don't know how, why does my personal credit score impact uh, the business? And so what you're really doing when you're establishing a business is you are marketing uh, yourself and you're marketing your skills uh, in order uh, as you manage money. And the, the only thing at that point that uh, financial institutions have to work with is how you've been able to manage your personal um, finances. So that is really important, um, especially if you're looking for uh, financial resources from a traditional lender. And when I say traditional, I mean walking into a bank and filling out a loan application um, at um, you know a, a name brand uh, financial institution and um, landing a loan. Um, so one of the things that you need to be aware of is that when you're uh, trying to work with traditional lenders, uh, most banks and, and certainly some credit unions, even though 
the revenue that they generate kind of goes back to their shareholders. Um, they want to make money off of lending you uh, money. And so they have algorithms or, uh, you know, a, a, a mathematical equation that lets them know how much they need to lend and at what interest rate they need to lend that amount in order to make money. And so typically with small businesses, um, and especially for minority small businesses, uh, typically you're not going to go into a bank and ask for you know, a loan for $3 million. It'll usually be something smaller especially if you're just starting out, um, less than 500,000, and in major cases, probably less than uh, $25,000 is what you would um, walk in and ask for. And um, for that amount of money, a traditional lender isn't gonna make a lot. They won't make anything. They, they would probably lose money lending small amounts like that. So typically they, they don't, um, they don't uh, entertain those types of um, loan applications. And that's where uh, you may need to turn to alternative lending um, sources, uh, but you have to be very careful that when you do that, uh, you're not getting um, hit with astronomical interest rates or predatory lenders, um, you know, things like payday lenders, um, where uh, you can borrow against a pay, your, your paycheck or borrow against um, some uh, smaller assets that you may have, like a car or something that's of value. But typically, those interest rates are so high that you're going to get yourself into a um, revolving cycle where you're just paying back the interest and you never really get around to the principal before you need another loan uh, to pay off the loan that you just got. And so the best practical advice is to, is to number one, make sure that your personal credit is um, in the good, fair, fair to good to excellent range. Um, anything above, uh, you know, a 630 uh, um, FICA is, is, you know, you're, you're, you're in the fair range there um, would be something that you might, uh, where you might be able to get some um, traditional lenders to look at you, but you certainly be able to get uh, alternative uh, funding sources uh, to assist. And one of the most reputable uh, funding sources that, um, in my experience, that I've found are CDFI, or Community Development Financial Institution. And they specialize in lending um, smaller amounts to small business owners and individuals and communities where traditional banks, you know, overlook it because they won't make a profit, CDFIs can come in and um, they're willing to work with you on small uh, uh, lending requests. Um, typically, like I said, you're talking about anything under, uh, certainly under $100,000, mainly under 50,000, but somewhere in the ballpark of between uh, ten to twenty-five thousand dollars in some cases, maybe less than that in others. But um, again, your personal credit is still going to uh, have an impact on on um, even in those situations. So um, it's one of the areas that um, to answer another one of uh, Daryl's proposed questions things that um, uh, I, I was involved with in, in South Bend, and that's bringing uh, CDFI-friendly 
um, format um, to South Bend. And the way that um, it works, it, it's, a, it's an opportunity to bring the full weight of CDFI networks from around the country, not just in a specific area, but around the country um, that where CDFIs specialize in a specific industry. They specialize in loaning to businesses in specific industries. So in uh, small businesses that may be uh, construction related businesses or marketing or um, cleaning, janitorial, um, whatever the industry is, there's, a, there's probably a CDFI that specializes in lending to those industries. The upside to having access to a nationwide network where you can identify a specific CDFI in the country that specializes in lending to your industry is that they have done all the research on um, what successful loan applicants look like, and they've developed a profile. So they know based on your on that specific industry, hey, we should be looking for uh, these specific things in their cash flow, in their uh, in their personnel, um, in their workforce. Uh, they can identify uh, and and they kind of understand where the landmines are in that specific industry. So tapping into a network as opposed to just utilizing one specific CDFI that's kind of a general, um, they kind of look at everything, number one gives you, um, uh, it increases the possibility that you will be, you'll get a, a you'll land a loan um, because they understand your industry. And number two, they're gonna make sure that they um, provide the resources to support you so that you can um, uh, literally pay back the, the initial loan uh, and become a stronger business in the process because they're gonna be giving you uh, specific resources in addition to just uh, the, the money, um, they would be able to provide you with the support that they know that you need in order to be a successful business going forward. So there's a real upside to uh, CDFI. In the example of um, the, the city of South Bend, um, South Bend is, is a, considered a, a mid-sized city and um, it's a little over 101,000 residents. So the equivalent of maybe one council district here in Fort Worth. And uh, the city initially uh, provided about $130,000 of initial investment. And with the CDFI network, uh, we were able to leverage that $130,000 investment into about $17 million in capital that was accessible to small businesses in uh, mid-sized uh, Midwestern town in Northern Indiana, which is phenomenal. So when you think about a city like Fort Worth, um, where there are uh, many traditional lenders here in the area, but um, I, um, I, we were a little surprised when we first started doing the research um, on Fort Worth. Uh, we were a little surprised that there aren't a whole lot of CDFIs that have set up shops in Fort Worth physically. And so we think that um, Fort Worth uh, is actually a really strong candidate to become a CDFI friendly city. Um, and that would mean that um, we would be able to provide that network of CDFIs across the country that specialize in specific industries um, 
and again, not just the capital, but also the resources that um, small businesses, small minority businesses would need in order to become uh, stronger and um, definitely more self-sufficient and ultimately in the long run become strong enough to walk into a traditional lender because they've developed uh, a great track record with a CDFI. Um, so that, that is, uh, those are two of the areas that, um, you know, I would, I would say uh, we're looking more closely at um, here in Fort Worth and, and um, we've already had some initial conversations uh, with CDFI Friendly America um, Mark Pinsky is the founding director and Adina Bromowitz is the co-founding uh, director. And I've worked, had the pleasure of working with both of them um, through uh, uh, the interactions in South Bend. And we've been in conversations about um, setting something up here in Fort Worth. Now, the idea is that it wouldn't just be focus solely on uh, the small minority business development, but it would also provide opportunities uh, to address um, some of the other areas that uh, we, we look at when we talk about the race and culture task force recommendations across criminal justice and education um, and on a wider scale economic development uh, health, housing, transportation, looking at ways that um, traditionally underbanked areas in Fort Worth would be able to access capital um, to, uh, you know, do minor repairs on their homes uh, or replace uh, major systems uh, in their housing um, so that they can increase the uh, value of their home, if they're homeowners. Um, we're looking at ways that, I know this is kind of a conversation across uh, the country, not just in, in Fort Worth, but uh, curbs and sidewalks. Uh, most cities have reimbursement um, programs where, uh, you know, the expectation is that people in the community will uh, front the money to put in a curb in front of your home, uh, and then a percentage of the cost uh, could be reimbursed. However, um, in my experience, it's pretty rare that um, people in uh, certain communities have, uh, you know, $5,000 uh, <laughs> laying around to put a curb in front of their home or to repair. Uh, a curb or a sidewalk. So this is a legitimate way to address um, not only small business, minority small business development, but also some other areas that typically um, kind of are intertwined in uh, communities of color, the challenges of communities of color, and can in some ways impact the success or the longevity of a minority business. Uh, in the area. So um, those are those are two ways. The other major uh, kind of area that we're uh, knee deep in the middle of right now is um, finalizing the disparity study and looking at um, those findings and recommendations uh, and making sure that, um, you know, what this this is a, kind of a very similar story here in Fort Worth uh, that um, we had in South Bend that, you know, we had a minority business or business diversity ordinance on the book for decades. And there were no results. You know, we, we, it was just kind of status quo for years. Um, where we didn't really say, see any great improvement. There was no closing of the uh, racial wealth divide gap uh, through entrepreneurship, even though we had an affirmative 
program that was supposed to be doing that uh, on the book, it was really just kind of words on the paper. And so um, what we are working on as a department now that the business diversity unit has uh, moved over into diversity and inclusion um, is to really start to look at um, from a 50,000 foot view, all of the processes that are in place uh, that deal with contracting and procurement across different departments. Um, I think the assumption is that all of the departments use the same uh, process um, when contracting or when you're uh, procuring something um, for the city. Anything over $50,000 uh, right now, according to the existing ordinance, should come through the business diversity division. Um, however, uh, it's not the same process. Every, every department kind of has developed their own, um, their own uh, way of doing it uh, to get to the end result. And so what we're focused on is, number one, identifying what those processes are, how they're different in different departments, establishing why they may be different, because they may have different legitimate, different um, uh, needs, and that may be why that they, they do it uh, a different way or have to uh, abide by a specific uh, state law or statute that may be another department who is um, looking at um, contracting in a different type of uh, commodity, they may not have that stipulation. And so what we're trying to do is get our hands around um, all the different processes and then establish a centralized uh, and um, a centralized way to um, review contracts, uh, building efficiencies in the process, but more importantly, building equity in the process. And that's going to take time because there's there's a lot of uh, state law uh, that in some cases um, uh, makes it a little bit more challenging um, to bring the kind of equity that I think people expect to see in this process. But we want to identify what that is so that everybody is aware. Um, and so after we uh, look at, go through and identify what all the different uh, processes are across different departments, typically what we want to do is concentrate on, um, especially initially, concentrate on the areas, uh, contracting areas where the city is spending the most money. Because typically um, with MWBE programs, uh, it, it's easy to kind of default to the low dollar spend. Um, where, you know, it's less than uh, a certain amount. Um, but when you think about, uh, you know, some of the, the information that I think will be con particularly compelling um, when the disparity study is released is that 90% of everything the city spends is concentrated in about 15 NAICS codes or North American Industry Classification System codes, commodity codes, 15. Um, the study looked at about 132 in all told, but 90% was concentrated in 15 specific areas. And out of the 15, the top three accounted for 70%. So um, really three areas. 
uh, construction, sewer lines, pipes um, are really where uh, engineering, I think it was in the top four, it was number four, but that's really where all the money is being spent. And that's really where we need to see more minority business uh, participation in those specific areas. So addressing um, how we review contracts, what the language is in that contract, uh, looking at whether or not the language in the contract uh, presents a specific barrier to minority businesses in participation, and finding ways that we can, uh, number one, stay within uh, the federal and state and local law, uh, but also make sure that there is a fair opportunity, a level playing field, so that minority businesses can compete. Um, another issue that's pretty prevalent across uh, contracting and procurement in municipal government, and you'll probably see this at every level of government, is you know the comfort level that uh, city buyers or project managers have with the people that they've been working with for a number of years, right? They they already know the people, um, and when you're in a fast-paced environment where you have to put out an invitation to bid, uh, the default is, I got to go with who I know. Um, and that's not always uh, beneficial to new businesses who are trying to break into the industry, and certainly not uh, minority businesses that maybe haven't built relationships with project managers and specific departments um, or city buyers within uh, specific departments. So the challenge is to make sure that number one, um, project managers and city buyers are aware that uh, there are other businesses that um, can get their, uh, can do quality work um, and number two, making sure that the language in our uh, bid packages allows them that opportunity. Uh, so those are those are just a few. I could I'd probably go on um, and list uh, uh, several more, but those are probably um, kind of at the top of our priority list. Is really. Um, doing a thorough uh, and deep dive in process mapping, figuring out um, why different departments uh, follow a different plan. Um, is it because of state law? Is it because of you know special uh, uh, considerations at the federal level that they have to consider that other departments don't have to? Uh, trying to figure out what, what it is and then uh, taking that information and creating more equitable language, but also at the end of the day, creating an, uh, a more efficient and equitable process where more minority businesses uh, can actually um, be included in the process. Uh, so I'm going to stop there and see if there's <laughs> if there are any um, questions or um, anything that Daryl or uh, any of the other panelists would like to, to add? Well, all right, Christina, that was a great, that was a lot of information to digest. So let's kind of uh, deal with a couple of things. So you mentioned the CDFIs and uh, the network, and I believe you were talking about maybe sort of a national network of CDFIs mm -hmm. to bring to bear on the issues that we might have here. And you mentioned the American network? Um, no, well, well, CDFI is uh, the CDFI friendly uh, community or CDFI friendly America is the national organization. And they go into cities and help set up uh, CDFI friendly city uh, level um, networks that okay. are specific to the needs that 
each city uh, identifies as being priority. Okay. So every city's CDFI isn't going to look the same. Um, our Fort Worth, uh, CDFI friendly Fort Worth won't look the same as CDFI friendly Bloomington or CDFI friendly South Bend. Ours could be completely different because we have different needs here. Okay. So one of the, oh, okay. go ahead. Understood. Cause we got about, it's about six minutes until four. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Uh, so you also mentioned that there were essentially three uh, NACE codes that account for 70% of the purchasing, yeah. if you will, in the city of Fort Worth. And I want to be clear that I have them. One is construction. The next is sewer lines. And you told me four was engineering. So I don't, I don't know that I got the third. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me, let me, uh, so I'm not, I want to be accurate. <laughs> Hold on just a that. second. And so you you I'm sure you can multitask. So why <laughs> so are you planning then to have some uh, um I don't know seminars or networking opportunities for project managers and buyers. I know some of that was done in the past. But I have a feeling that you're mm -hmm. talking about it um, at a more in-depth level or something, or not just four, or five, or six uh, department head type people, but maybe, maybe they. End, I don't know what that number is. You, maybe you could tell me what that number might look like. Yes. So, um, so let me first let me answer the the question. So the top uh, commodity codes. Um, the number one was highway, street, and bridge construction. Number two is water and sewer line and related structures. Number three is commercial and institutional building construction. And number four is engineering services. And then number five, to round out the top five, is specialized freight, trucking, local. Mm. Okay. So That's that is really um, where all the money is going. Like a, a, the, the largest share of spending is, is happening right there. So we need to really um, identify ways that minority businesses uh, can um, either, you know, get in there, it, get in, in, in those top five areas um, you know, starting out maybe as a sub, but certainly um, building capacity so that they can become uh, a prime in those areas. And I think, uh, you know, if we were able to do that, to move a minority business into a prime spot in one of those five areas, uh, we would be in much better shape overall. Uh, when it comes to uh, equity and contracting with city dollars. That sounds great. Um, I can say that just looking at these, um, the, hot, the, the building construction, engineering, trucking, I think those are some definite areas that we have people who can get involved with those. I know when you start talking about building construction, depending on how tall the building is, you get into some uh, different aspects when you're looking at mm -hmm. bridge construction or a highway so those are some specialized things depending on the the complexity of it that uh, we have mm -hmm. some challenges there so I, I i'm happy to know that and i'm happy to really look at some of the previous bids that have been on the street say for the last year or two in those mm -hmm. specific areas and let's look at those and then we can look and see if we do have people that could have uh taken care of those because obviously those things are going to pop up in the future. So right, that, that's uh, where that's where yeah, that that's where we spent money. And in the um, the disparity study, it looked at uh, contracts between 2013 and 2018, and so over about a little over 300 prime contracts and about 1,841 uh, subcontracts. 
uh, made up the total uh, contract or the final contract data file that was used to analyze uh, and determine uh, disparity uh, in this uh, analysis. So um, based on that information, that's where, you know, we, the city is typically spending its money. So it'd be interesting to know when you start talking about specialized trucking, and I really look forward to uh, digging into a deeper dive of this so we can really uh, match up with our current members and, and businesses we have out there to match up with those needs that have transpired in the past so that mm -hmm. we can look uh, forward to seeing what we can do together. Because I have people, I got a couple of trucking people. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. There, there, there are opportunities out there. We just need to, um, you know, uh, uh, make sure that number one, we're aware that they exist, uh, and then you know, there, like I said, there, there are a lot of statutes and codes, you know, from different uh, uh, sources that you know, all have to be considered when you're reviewing um, whether or not uh, a business or vendor or contractor is eligible. So looking sure. at all of the, all of the fine print in, in that respect um, is really important because on the face, you wouldn't normally think, you know, like, oh, I, I, didn't know, I didn't realize that I had to be an engineer, a licensed engineer in the state of Texas uh, to be a project manager on uh, a contract that uh, requires engineering services. So, um, one of the thing, so one of the things uh, um, is that we, I just lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm 60 now, so, but. <laughs> <laughs> We were just talking about, <laughs> gosh, um, the, the, oh, pre-qualifications. So that's a major, uh, that's a major point. Pre-qualifications and some of those requirements, are those requirements really required to take care of the bid? Or are those requirements really just uh, restrictive and keeping people out of there? So, I think that's something very important. I know that sometimes uh, insurance situations, the requirement for insurance and for a subcontractor, they're required to have, you know, X number of dollars of insurance. Heck, they're not even making any money after they pay the premium. So I think uh, pre-qualifications and that process and the paperwork, I have someone in particular, she's telling me right now, it's a, a bunch of paperwork to get pre-qualified for, um, you know, like the street streets to be pre-qualified with the city of Fort Worth. So, I mean, that's ball is in her court, but I think we really have to look at that as well as a barrier to. Uh, yeah. So one of one of the things that's interesting, you would bring up, um, you know, insurance and bonding. Uh, this is something that we had to share with uh, some minority contractors um, in in South Bend. Uh, you know, they were saying the same thing, like, wow, I can't, I can't afford uh, to bid on this because I can't afford the, you know, bonding or insurance requirement. And what they didn't realize is that other contractors were building that cost into their bid. <laughs> so <laughs> they weren't, they weren't coming out of pocket up front, they were building that cost for insurance into their bid. Uh, now, the issue with that is if you are an established business that has already has a, a large uh, bonding capacity, that's a big difference in what you're able to do um, because you'll have the money on, on the back end as opposed to an emerging minority business who's just trying to get their foot in the door, what you would have access to. And so um, these, are, these are areas where, uh, you know, working with a bonding company 
uh, that can help you build capacity, uh, work your way up from, you know, small uh, small jobs or contract, subcontracting opportunities where you complete them successfully, and then that sets you up for uh, a little larger bonding capacity on the next job uh, until you can reach um, that level. But, you know, there, there are all kinds of um, uh, tricks of the trade that aren't necessarily – you know, anything that they written down, it's not written down in a handbook, but things like that um, really matter because it was like a light bulb moment for minority businesses. They were like, oh, I didn't realize that that's how everybody else was doing it. Yeah, they're building that cost into their bid. They're not, they're not coming out of pocket with that right away. Now they've got money, you know, behind them to do it, but, uh, you know, just, you know, little things like that are really helpful um, to an emerging minority business owner uh, who's just kind of learning the process of okay. doing business with municipal government. And there's another question regarding uh, maybe the MWBE component should be part of annual reviews for various department heads or buyers, et cetera, mm -hmm. and maybe even assistant city managers. What do you think about yeah, that? So, yeah, so one of the things that we are doing new this year as a, as, um, uh, a major project in our department is the equity plan. And so um, the equity plan is really a blueprint for uh, equity and delivery of municipal services, um, but also it's kind of an internal uh, review process for departments and uh procurement and contracting uh, is going to be one of those areas that we will review. So the, the first department, um, the pilot department for, uh, for us is PPW or Transportation and Public Works, which is where um, <laughs> those uh, major dollars are located. So they're going to be the first ones out of the gate for us to actually um, take a, a good look at um, in, in reviewing uh, their processes in, in that area, but also being able to establish a baseline going forward uh, to see all of those things, um, the language in their, in their contract, uh, you know, the communication plan. Um, and so that, that is uh, something that we're looking at. All right, we're uh, Denise. Uh, do you see any other questions that I didn't uh, get to? Um, on Facebook Live, we have more of like statements um, talking about legislators wording the bills that automatically hinder Black-owned businesses from qualifying from program businesses. Um, okay, um, we can maybe do and then I think you hit on the uh, MB NWBE goals for assistant city managers and um, all that. Mr. Jennings wanted to uh, see if you were aware of William Mann. Um, it's uh, William Mann. Uh, they are uh, a lending corporation as well, CDFI. Um, they are downstairs in the in the same building as we are. Um, so Mr. James wanted to see if you were aware of them. Yes, there, there are a couple um, of CDFIs. I know that they're, they're in the building. And what we uh, are proposing is that we uh, definitely continue to work directly with those CDFIs that are right here locally. But we also want to uh, widen the gate, um, as it were, in opportunities for additional CDFIs to come in and support uh, minority business owners and emerging minority business owners in Fort Worth. So nothing that we do in our Department of Diversity Inclusion is about cutting anybody out. It's always about expanding opportunity. 
So we want to keep that and expand it and do more with it. Good. We actually do have a couple other questions. Um, Stay Hall asks, which by the way, she's our, one of our new board members. So hi, Stay. Welcome. <laughs> Um, um, she's asking, how would you find a CDFI friendly institution in your area? Like, how can you go find these? Well, um, that is uh, why we're in conversations with CDFI friendly America. So the idea, the way that the model works is um, the CDFI friendly Fort Worth uh, organization would actually match uh, minority businesses with specific CDFIs uh, across the country. So you would be working directly with um, a, a, uh, someone in person to help match you to a CDFI um, that specializes in your industry. And there may be, you know, anywhere from, you know, two to 10 CDFIs across the country um, with different levels of success that you could actually choose from. So it gives you a wider range of, um, of competition uh, for, your, uh, for your dollars, basically. Um, and so that's, how, that's what the, the model looks like. You would be matched with uh, a CDFI um, uh, nationally. Okay. And then we have another question from La Jefe. Um, she asked, any current opportunities for specialized freight local? Freight local. Any current opportunities for, I didn't hear the last part. Freight local. Um, there, you, it's listed on the website. So if you go to um, the, uh, it depends on the, so if you go to the, the, the uh, where did I just see? I was just looking at it this morning. Um, the contracting website that lists all of nope. the opportunities, you have to kind of go through there and look at nope. the different bid packages um, to nope. see if uh, specialized freight is one of the services that's a part of uh, a larger contract but you really have to go in and, and, and look for it. So ideally, in an ideal world, you could just kind of type in the NAICS codes and bring up all of the opportunities um, that are looking for that type of service. We're not there yet, um, but that's definitely a goal down the road. So right now, uh, you would just need to go to the website and review um, all of the um, open bids uh, and uh, see if there is a specialized freight uh, trucking local uh, um, on that or in that bid package. Great. Thank you for that. Um, okay. I think that's all the information on, I think that's all the ones from the Facebook Live. Well, Christina, we, I have uh, 412. We, we over is get, again. <laughs> <laughs> but it really Don't is worry. it really is important information and i look forward to uh like i said drilling down some more on on these specifics and matching those contracts literally you could look at the past the past year or two and under mm -hmm. those the nace codes that you're referring to are those types of uh, bids and pull out and see what we could have, or maybe we missed that we could uh, match them up so we know what to look for in the future. Um, so I think that's a great, I think that's a great opportunity. And I look forward to uh, working with additional CDFIs or the CDFIs we have here. And, and maybe they need some more funding because you turned, you said that you turned a hundred thousand dollars into 17 million. That's sort of like Jesus. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't, I didn't do it personally. It was really, um, the, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not in that league. Um, <laughs> um, but it was really the, the work of uh, CDFI, uh, Mark and Adina and 
uh, Sonia Karnowski, who really brought together um, uh, local CDFIs and uh, major uh, traditional lenders like Bank of America, who um, really saw um, the opportunities that they were missing out on um, in Fort Worth. And that's where uh, the 17 million came from, those larger institutions that, you know, once we uh, clarified and reframed the narrative around uh, risk when it comes to minority business lending, and we have the data that showed them that it was, uh, in some cases, less risk to lend to a minority business uh, owner or enterprise than it would be uh, to lend in other situations. And so, you know, when, you, when you've got the data behind you that says, look, these, there are minority businesses that are out there that are financially stable, they just need access. And okay. if you give them access, there is, uh, you know, you can turn a profit uh, just like in any other um, uh, lending opportunity. And that's really um, <clears throat> what I credit CDFI Friendly America with doing is really uh, helping us tell the story through data to large financial institutions and tell them what they're missing when um, they overlook lending opportunities to minority businesses. Well, I tell you that I'm sure that we could um, get the three chambers together and get the bankers together and all sit in on that presentation and we'll be happy to, uh, to help facilitate that. And with that, I think we've uh, bent your ear enough. I thank you for uh, doing an encore performance. <laughs> 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 and going on to something and digging, especially this time where we have so much, um, where people are needing so many financial, uh, so much money needing financially, where their mm -hmm. business, for them individually, and hopefully this, this won't last all the time. So we still got to look forward to uh, developing our businesses, developing cap capitalizing those businesses so that we can take things to another level. So I look forward to talking to you and working on that program with CDFIs, as well as the uh, the three or four or five NACE codes that make up 90% <laughs> of the spending <laughs> in the city of Fort Worth. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's, so. it's, it's crazy, but. <laughs> so thank you again for coming and I'm gonna hand it back over to, to Denise. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was definitely a lot of great information. I know that we had a little conversation going on here on Facebook Live in the comments. Um, so thank you all so much for um, joining us today. Thank you, Christina. Of course, thank you, Daryl, for being here with me and uh, facilitating this with me. Um, thank you all for joining in uh, regularly every, th every uh, Tuesday at 3 o'clock here either on Zoom or on Facebook Live. Like I've mentioned before, please make sure to like us on our social medias. Our social media handles are FW Black Chamber of Commerce. Well, just uh, FW Black Chamber. Um, then you'll be able to see all the latest um, information that we're putting out there, any, um, any events that are coming up, even if they're virtual, um, just check that out. Make sure that you're subscribed to our uh, mailing list. Uh, again, remember that um, we're having that grant opportunity opening up tonight at midnight. Um, check out our, um, if uh, check your emails or check uh, Facebook for that link. The website is uh, protectthefort.com. Uh, so uh, make sure you have all your information and your business um, details, business like information details, so that you're able to uh, complete the application as soon as possible and submit it as soon, as soon as possible to make sure that you're in the runner up um, to get uh, something, you know, like, like I said, grants are money that you do not have to pay back. So it's just free money there. You just have to make sure that you catch it on time. Um, yes, Daryl. I just want to remind us again that on May 20th, which is uh, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, we will have the Minority Leaders Luncheon at from noon to one. It will be a virtual as well, and we will have 
Fort Worth Housing Solutions, who will talk to us about uh, the redevelopment of Stop 6 and the $35 million grant from the federal government to help kickstart that. So we want you to tune in, have your questions ready, and hopefully you can get a big bite of that out. For sure. Uh, thank you all so much and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye, everybody. Until next time. <laughs>